Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1190. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to go a little bit of a different route. First, I'm going to tell you that I was at an amazing conference this weekend, the XRP Las Vegas 2023 conference. It happened over Friday and Saturday. And the very exciting thing is that CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, showed up Friday night at the cocktail party unannounced. It was a surprise to us all. Of course, the event organizers knew it was going to happen, but none of the attendees knew it was going to happen. And it was electric when Brad walked into the room. So that was very exciting. But more than that, I did a video to talk about everything that happened at the event. So if you're interested in hearing and seeing video of the event and seeing pictures and things that went on at the event, I did a standalone video over on YouTube on my Linda P. Jones YouTube channel that you can go to YouTube and watch it, and it'll give you the lowdown on everything that happened while we were at the event. Pretty exciting stuff. But today I'm going to talk with you about Americans being worried about their bank accounts. According to a recent survey, almost 50% of people are worried, moderately worried, or very worried about the money that they have in a bank. And 50% said they weren't worried at all or not too worried. This level of concern is back to the highs that we saw in 2008 after the collapse of Lehman Brothers. And we all know that nothing has been solved since Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. And now we're seeing another cycle of bank failures happening. It is frightening, but it doesn't necessarily mean that your funds are at risk. I did another podcast for you about FDIC insurance, how it's all handled, and how to diversify your funds so that you are protected under the FDIC. The poll was conducted in April of this year when Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank had already failed, but since then we've had First Republic go down and sell its assets to J.P. Morgan Chase. But now what's happening is a lot of hedge funds are shorting bank stocks. They're literally trying to drive down the price of bank stocks in order to profit, and that's making the bank stocks look weaker, like PacWest, which is down 86% this year. Is that the next bank to go down? It's possible. Any bank that has a financial problem is usually taken over by a larger bank. That's the way it's always worked in the past, is a larger bank comes in and basically takes over their assets and sometimes their liabilities. But we all know that the FDIC backs $250,000 per depositor. I was commenting to a friend at dinner last night that It's a little odd to me that the Fed isn't being more demonstrative about the fact that your funds are safe and that they're not out there saying we're going to backstop every single asset in the banking system and make sure that all is secure. It's a little bit strange to me that they're not saying that. And instead, what we're hearing is Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen come out and say the U.S. has to raise its debt ceiling or it could have dire consequences. And that she's warning the U.S. could run out of cash by the 1st of June. We've hit that $31.4 trillion limit and Congress has to act in order to approve appropriations to be able to spend more and raise the ceiling. The debt ceiling has been raised or extended or revised 78 times since 1960. So we're not talking about something that's unusual or should be difficult to do. Now, sometimes they've been a little delayed doing it, but Congress has always come together and raised the debt ceiling. 
But now we're even getting talk about a default, which would be the first in U.S. history, which would wreak havoc on global markets and shatter trust in the United States as a global business partner. It also means that the U.S. wouldn't be able to borrow any money or pay the salaries of government employees and military personnel or Social Security checks or other obligations, such as defense contractor payments. Janet Yellen said, quote, We have learned from past debt limit impasses that waiting until the last minute to suspend or increase the debt limit can cause serious harm to business and consumer confidence, raise short-term borrowing costs for taxpayers, and negatively impact the credit rating of the United States. But she said it's impossible to know for sure when exactly the U.S. will run out of cash. And the Congressional Budget Office said there's a significantly greater risk that the Treasury will run out of funds in early June. But they said the projected exhaustion date remains uncertain because the timing and amount of revenue collections and outlays over the coming weeks are difficult to predict. So what the Treasury is planning to do is to increase their borrowing through the end of the quarter ending in June, totaling about $726 billion, which was about $440 billion more than projected earlier this year. And officials have said it's partly due to lower than expected income tax receipts, higher government spending, and a beginning of quarter cash balance that was lower than anticipated. So whether or not Congress is going to get their act together, we don't know. But Janet Yellen said the Treasury Department has begun extraordinary measures to avoid a government default. What that means, we're not sure, but I'll keep reporting on it to you and we will soon find out. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.